Discretionary products. Okay? So we have here discretionary and we have non discretionary. So discretionary means that we don't really need it. We only buy it when we have some extra money. Non discretionary means we need this. No matter what state the economy is in, we're going to buy it. Can anybody give me an example of a non-discretionary product? Rice. Rice. Anything else? Huh? <coughs> Water. Bread. Bread. Potatoes. Hmm? Clothes. Milk. Milk. Okay. So which product, which company is going to be riskier? Discretionary or non-discretionary? Discretionary. Discretionary, right? Does that make sense? Right? The stock price is going to go up and down more. The profits are going to go up and down more of discretionary products like handbags, luxury handbags, that kind of thing, right? There are some people who argue that at the very top level of luxury products, it's not risky because very rich people normally don't, aren't affected by a bad economy. They have so much money even though the economy is bad, they're okay. So they can still buy the very top luxury product, right? But generally, if we talk about the majority of people, they stop buying luxury products, foreign holidays, expensive cars, if the economy is bad. But they continue to buy, in the Western country, phone service, internet service, okay? So, we saw that for developed markets, it's different than developing markets. Products which are non-discretionary in developed markets, like internet or phone, can be discretionary products in emerging markets or developing markets. Okay? So we can get an idea. We already saw for country risk, with political and economic risk, that countries like India or Brazil, their stock market is more risky than the US, right? But also, they have wider uh, discretionary products in those countries. More products are discretionary products. <coughs> so another, another reason why it's more risky. Okay. The next determinant is uh, leverage. Okay. So operating leverage. So how much fixed costs does the the uh, company have? Do you understand fixed cost? What does? Can you give me an example of a fixed cost for a company? Electricity no. can change every month. <coughs> Land, yes. Fixed cost is a cost which doesn't change. Okay? Land, we buy at the start, right? It's like a long term purchase, usually. So, one example of fixed costs is if we have. Like oil pipe. Do you understand oil oil pipe? <coughs> Does Russia have an oil pipe from Russia to Europe? Yeah. Yes, right. The company makes the oil pipe at the start. Okay? Now if we send ten 
liters of oil a minute, or if we spend, save 100 liters of oil a minute, does the cost of the pipe change? No, we already built the pipe, we already paid for the pipe, okay? We also, if it breaks, we have to pay for maintenance, for fixing the pipe, okay? So the cost of the pipe doesn't change. So this kind of thing is a high fixed cost, okay? We have to build a pipeline, that's a high fixed cost. So if we send just 10 liters of oil a minute, we can't save any money. We still pay for the pipeline, okay? So we, if we have high fixed cost, we want to have a good business. So which do you think is more risky? A company which has a high fixed cost or a low fixed cost? High. High fixed cost is riskier. Why? Because they need to pay a lot of money, but they don't do this money. Okay, they need to pay a lot of money, usually up front. And they're not sure if they can get this business. Okay? What happens if they don't get this business? Can they get their money back for the pipeline? Can they say to the person who constructed the pipeline, uh, I don't need the pipeline anymore, I don't have much business, can you take back the pipe and give me back my money? <coughs> right? They can't say that. So with the high fixed costs company, we have to pay a lot of money at the start. Okay? So if we lose our business suddenly, we can lose a lot of money. Let's look at a low fixed cost company. Right? A low fixed cost company like, uh, let's say, a coffee shop. So in a coffee shop, do we have to buy the land or can we rent or lease the land? <coughs> we can rent, right? A coffee shop, we lease. Okay, for one year lease. Okay? What kind of things do we have? We have electricity. We have staff paying for the wages. Okay? We have coffee beans, okay? for example, other ingredients, right? We can buy some small costs like some seats and so on, okay? Tables, just cheap ones. So what happens here if I have a less business? What am I going to do? If I have less business than I expected? Am I going to keep on the staff or let them go? Let them go. Am I going to buy more coffee beans or buy less coffee beans? Yes. Am I going to use more electricity or less electricity? Yes. Okay, then next year I, maybe I don't make, I, I can change my lease to a cheaper, a cheaper location, right? At the start I was next to the metro station. It was expensive lease, but I can change. It's a one year lease, so I can change again the next year, okay? So this is low fixed cost. Okay? Do you understand fixed cost? This is called variable. Variable means change. Vari variable cost is high. So because the variable cost is high here, my business is not that risky. I can adapt to the situation. Okay? But with the oil pipeline, I can't adapt to the situation. I'm in trouble. My company is going to be make a big loss. Okay? So therefore, the higher fixed cost is more risky. What kind of businesses have high fixed cost apart from oil pipelines? What other businesses have high fixed costs? Where do you need to pay a lot of money up front? Rail. rail, transport, you buy buses or rail or an airplane. Right, they have a high fixed cost, the airline industry. They have to pay for a Boeing, it costs hundreds of millions of dollars, right? At the start, then what happens if they don't get any customers? Okay, then they're going to be in trouble. So, a higher operating leverage, so a higher up fixed cost, results in greater earnings variability. Variability means changing which in turn results in higher pages. So our profit is going up or down more, then uh, we are going to have uh, higher beta. So just let's look at an example of our profit going up and down. 
Let's say that our variable cost is 100 and our profit is 120 here. Okay? Then next year, our profit goes down. Our profit goes down to 80. Okay? Then our variable cost can also go down to say to 65. Okay? So I still make a profit of 15 here. Not as good as last year. Last year I made a profit of 20. But here I still make a profit of 15, even though my revenue went down by 20%. Okay? What about the pipeline? If we have the pipeline, it has a high fixed cost. It has a 100 fixed cost. So this year I make 120 profit. Okay? So, sorry, 120 revenue. So I make 20 profit. Next year, it changes to, to 80. I just make 80 revenue. What's my cost? 100. 100. Okay, I made a loss of minus 20. Okay, so here I made profit of 20. My, my uh, <coughs> revenue went down to 80 by 20%. I still made a profit of 15 because my variable cost <coughs> went down. Okay, but here it's a fixed cost. It stays the same. So my revenue went down, I made a loss of minus 20. Okay, so that means that I have more variability in my earnings. Here my earnings just changed by 5. Here my earnings changed by 40. With the same revenue. Okay, so if we have big changes in our income, profit and loss, our stock price is going to change too. Right? Our people who invest in our stock want to get some dividends from our profit. So, this is going to mean a higher beta for this kind of company. <clears throat> so, fixed cost measure, usually we divide fixed costs by variable costs. And this tells us the relationship between fixed and variable costs. The higher pr the proportion, the higher the operating leverage. Okay? So, in this coffee shop, we had some fixed costs like tables and chairs, something like that. Right? So, we put the fixed costs on the top line. Variable cost on the bottom line. <coughs> then uh, we want to change. See the variability of our profit, twenty or fifteen, right? <coughs> so when we talked about accountancy, we talked about EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes. Okay. So this is like a net. This is profit before tax. Okay. So. <coughs> The variability measure is the percentage change in EBIT over the percentage change in revenues. So here, this changed from 20 to 15. So this change was about 5 over 20. So it was about uh, 25%, right? So we have 25% over. The percentage change in revenue was from 100 to 80. That's a 20% change, okay? So here we have 25% over 20%, okay? This is our EBIT variability. But on the other hand, here, we have our change in EBIT went from 20 to minus 20. So that's 100% uh, uh, minus 200%, okay? Over 20. So here it's going to be 1.2, uh, something like that, and this one is going to be 10, okay? So this is our every variability measure. The variability here is 10, and the variability here is 1.2, okay? So just we, we, need to cut, we need to know the revenue, and we need to know the profit, okay? Then what was the change in profit here? Profit changed by 25%. What was the change in revenue? Okay. Revenue changed by 20%. So, uh, let's have a look at Disney's operating leverage. So, operating leverage, fixed cost over variable cost. Okay. So, here we can see Disney for all these years. For example, in 1990, it had this revenue, 5 billion, 800 million. 
uh, the average was uh, 1 billion, right? The average change from last year, uh, 16 billion. So uh, we can get the average uh, for Disney here. So we have to make the, uh, we find the average and then we get the percentage of change in EBIT over the percentage of change in sales. So we take our numbers from back here, which is 13.7 uh, is the average uh, change in sales revenues every year for Disney. And 13.26 is the average change in profit every year for Disney. So we divide the change in profit by the change in sales this equation here. Right? This tells us our EBIT variability equals 0 0.97. So we can compare this to other entertainment firms. Right? This number by itself is not easy to understand. But if we compare this number to other firms in the same kind of business, it makes more sense, right? So this is lower than the operating leverage for other entertainment firms. So other entertainment firms' operating leverage is 1.15. So this would suggest that Disney has lower fixed costs than its competitors. So Disney's is even lower than this. It's lower than 1.2. It's 0 0.97, okay? So Disney doesn't have a high fixed cost. <clears throat> so, then Disney acquired Capital Cities in 1996, and this may have skewed or changed the operating leverage. So if we just uh, look at the operating leverage from 1996 on, it's a little bit higher, okay? So when the company makes an acquisition, the company's business can change a little bit. Okay, so we just have to understand that. So, do you have any questions about operating leverage? Fixed cost versus variable cost? Okay, then the third determinant is the financial leverage. So this is uh, easier to understand. We already explained this at the start of the course. Which is riskier? I start a, a restaurant with 100,000 loan from the bank or 100,000 of my money? Loan from the bank is riskier, right? That's leverage. High leverage is high debt. So as firms bor borrow, they create fixed costs, interest payment. Interest payment is like a fixed cost. You have to pay the interest every year. You don't have a choice. It doesn't change. Okay? So if you bought the coffee shop and you set up the coffee shop with a loan, then you have to pay all the interest back. That's like a fixed cost. This makes earnings more volatile. Okay? So you run the restaurant with your own money. You don't do well in the first year. It's okay. Right? You run uh, the restaurant with the loan, you have a high interest payment, you don't do well in the first year, then you can't even pay the interest, you could lose your business, okay? Or you're making a big loss. So it's, your earnings are more volatile, just like this case here. You have more fixed costs with the interest payment, your earnings is going to be volatile. What's another word for volatile in English? It's a word we use in finance. What does volatile mean? Hmm? Are you a volatile person? Hmm? Some people are volatile. It means their personality changes very suddenly. Right? You could be talking to them one minute. They're fine. The next minute they're really angry. They're shouting at you. Do you know anybody like that? Volatile person? Hmm? No? Then financial markets can also be volatile. They can change suddenly. Go up or down, suddenly. So volatile looks like this on the graph. Okay, so earnings can be more like this if you have a high interest payment. Okay, and again, this is going to 
increase your pay height. <coughs> so, <coughs> beta of equity alone can be written as a function of the unlevered beta and the debt equity ratio. So this is a big sentence, but what we're saying is we can uh, find an unlevered beta. Unlevered beta means finding a beta which is not including the debt. Okay? So find a beta which doesn't include the debt. So we use the debt to equity ratio to do this. Do you understand debt to equity ratio? How much debt do we have compared to equity? <coughs> 